You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. This is our like season finale, season four, 36 episodes, I think. Wow. What a time we've had. I am really excited for today's episode. I'm so sorry. If this is your first time listening, (laughs) welcome to the end. Uh, There are four full seasons that you can binge, most of which is evergreen uh, concepts, materials, messages, teachings. So enjoy bin, enjoy that binge, baby. My name is Rachel Force. This is a spiritual podcast for me, a comedian, because healing is, well, hilarious. And today's episode's not very funny, um, but <laughs> uh, I almost feel like this is like the most, see, this is when it gets funny because I can't even take myself this seriously. This is an incredibly sacred episode. I feel like this energy, this like capsule that we're in is like last week we talked all about like the portal and this commitment and getting on the ride. And we've talked about all of these other pieces of alignment that go into that, that if we want to commit, then we have to let go of all these other things. Like we're doing it and we're literally, um, I'm not going to call the episode this, but I could call the episode shit or get off the pot. Um, because that's ultimately the point that we're at. We're, you're literally at this point where there, there is no going back. Like you are in the labyrinth, you are here, you're on the roller coaster, like all of these metaphors, all these things we've been talking about. And now there's nothing left to do but commit. There's nowhere left to go. There's nothing left. We're done with the researching and the and the development of it of, oh, well, we could try this or we could try this. Like we have tried everything and now we know everything that doesn't work and we have this opportunity. I don't know why I keep seeing this, but I'm just going to share it of like, if you guys have seen Elf, there's the winter holiday classic, um, starring Will Ferrell. And he gets on that like iceberg, um, in the North pole. And he's like, okay, bye. You know, and he says goodbye to the Norwal. Bye buddy. Hope you find your dad, you know? And he just leaves excellent uh, impersonation. And then he just like arrives in central park. And I feel like that that's what we're doing. Like this commitment, this vow, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, it like, this is it. And I know that we all feel that trepidation of like, like I can feel it from you, not projecting. A lot of it is also my own apprehensions, but I can feel it. And it is like, you all know, You all know that we have done, we've gone from the chaos, not having the clarity. We've tried a lot of different things. We failed. We found what works. And like, now we know where we're going. So there's nothing left to do, but just to go there. And I really want this to be a season of deepening your capacity to accept that you're capable. And how we do that is by creating evidence. And we're going to create that evidence through experiences, through making asks, through putting ourselves out there and getting comfortable being capable. Because that's something also people don't talk about, right? Everyone's like, um, I don't totally subscribe to every aspect of the statement, but just for purposes of the conversation, right? It's like, the universe isn't going to give you a million dollars if you don't even know how to manage 10,000, right? Like we get what we're ready for. We manage what we're ready for. We can build on what we're ready for. And that's what's really happening here and now that there's all these fears and all these projections of everything that we're putting out there. But it's like, how do you even know it's not real yet? The only thing that's left to do is like get on the little sliver of the iceberg, like 
here we go. Just like push you off into the sea of unknown and let you get to the other side. And so we're going to create this evidence of understanding and feeling into our capability because we know, I think on a soul level, maybe even intellectually that we are a match for our mountain. We know this is our destiny. We've seen the visions. We've had the downloads, blah, 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 blah. You've been doing all the other things. You've been doing the nervous system reset. You've been in hypnotherapy. You've switched meds. You've gotten a new therapist. Like whatever the ways are in which you've been supporting yourself, we've now done all that work. And so that's why I keep just seeing that image of like the iceberg that like cuts off from the rest. And that's what we have to step on and just sail out on our own because there's nothing else left to do but to commit. There's nowhere else to go. And I think it's a beautiful time for us to be parting ways, at least in this medium. Don't worry. You can find me all over the internet. Okay. But in, in this kind of long form sit down together. And I think that, you know, kind of on a, a more metaphysical level of that, of like, this is really the time we've talked all about the seasons. Uh, you could go, if you're listening to this in real time, you can go listen to the, the November, um, or you can get the November newsletter. Same thing. Like we've talked all ab- around and about this energy in this season. And so it's time that we just do it. And and the fucked up thing is, is that we all know that it works because we've seen it, but it's that in between that we're so scared of. I mean, I know that I'm somehow like excited because it's kind of like, you know, I always say it's like, let's fuck around and find out. But also like, how do all these pieces come together? Will people get it? Like all these other things. But that's, that is the fun of it, right? That's the hero's journey of like, now it's time, you know, for us to go out and live the adventure. And so I think that's really what I encourage you over these next two months, which are like, what are all of those asks that you need to make? What is everything that you need to get prepared underneath you so that you can launch and do that thing? Whether that's you know, uh, dating again, getting out of a relationship, building your business, going back to school, applying for school, graduating, like whatever that precipice is for you. That's what the next two months are is we have time to have this respite and make those asks and really start to position ourselves and put ourselves out there to find out how capable we really are. This is the part where we get to strengthen that promise and vow, right? Like this is literally like Jesus walking on the water. This is, did I just compare us all to Jesus Christ? But like, this is that time where we step out and this is that faith piece. And I, I want us, one thing I want to leave you with is remembering that you can replace that fear with excitement. That your body doesn't know the difference, right? That adrenaline feeling right before you hit send on that email or you ask that person out or like whatever the thing is, that adrenaline, your body doesn't know the difference between fear and excitement. So we can choose to identify it as excitement because honestly, that's all it is. I was talking about this with my husband recently. We're making some big choices, (laughs) not big, they're massive for our business, okay? They are so daunting and terrifying and overwhelming, And he keeps being like, well, what if blank happens? And they're all negative outcomes. And sure, they're all possibilities. And I was like, well, okay, relax. Let's even the playing field here. If we are going to make up scenarios that do not exist, let's also make up scenarios that don't exist that are incredibly positive. This is going to take off so quickly that becomes the problem. It's not the financial aspect of it. It's the, oh my gosh, this is getting so much bigger than us. We got to get a handle on this beast and get more people you know, helping us and working for us. What a great problem to have, right? Um, It becomes so successful so quickly that we're living in a new kind of like paradigm and an idea of like, holy shit, it worked, right? Like there's anything that you and I, that you're listening, that we're doing, we're not off base. Like, I just, I know that, like that this is the frustrating part, you know, we're like scientists and the world who wants to poo-poo all of this idea that we have an inner divine knowing, which is like absurd to me. Cause I'm like, why would you not just accept that? That's like the easier part and it's real anyway, but whatever conversation for a different day. 
But that's the thing. Like, you know the difference between between when you have been out of alignment. That's when we really should have been scared, right? Like, I should have been more scared. Like, 2018, Rachel should have been way more terrified than well-prepared and aligned 2024 version, right? And I'm sure the same is for you, whatever the timelines are. So through the action steps that you're going to take over the next two months, and I'm just leaving us at that two months because then, you know, we'll be back together in January and we'll kind of like see where we are. But I really, really want you to take this as informal, spiritual and practical homework of if you're wanting to get to that next thing, if you're wanting to operate on this new level of energy and whatever that means to you, we have to level that up. Like I keep finding myself like, I'm like, ooh, reach up, ooh, reach up. Like um, it's easier for me to put the dishes in the sink and walk walk away. It's like, great, but then you're going to have to come back to them later. So can you like ugh, reach up and just put them in the dishwasher and then we're done, right? Um, whatever I, I'm really trying to work on, Whatever the day brings me, I'm making the highest choices that I can. And can I tell you, like, this is the most annoying sidebar. Okay. Can we talk about our future selves? I'm going to guess this is true for most of us. The most annoying thing is always like, you are your future self, right? And I, that's listened two episodes ago. That's all I'm talking about. All right. But we're all like, oh, my, like our future selves. And we're going to be the, our future. we are them. The only difference is like, they're radically responsible and it's really fucking irritating. You know what I mean? Like whenever I check in with myself and she's like, "Mm, could you try like a little bit harder though? I'm like, are you being condescending or are you being helpful? Like, what are we doing here? Right. But that's the truth that over the next two months, you get the opportunity to, can you reach a little bit higher? Can you make the direct ask? You're not curious about the promotion. I would like to be considered for the promotion because blank. Right. Like we are asking the direct questions. I would rather have a no than ambiguity because I didn't ask for a yes or no answer, right? And trusting that good things will happen. That's the other thing. All, so many of us out here, we're healers, we're creators, we're artists, we're mothers, we're parents, we're blah, 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 blah. And that's all what we tell people. Then put your money where your mouth is. Mostly talking to myself right now, but I know this is true for some of you as well. That this is the opportunity. That's also that total alignment piece. It's a piece. It's not our action is over here and our like values and our projection of life is on the other side. No, that's what total alignment is. Now they have to overlap. Now we have to be brave. And here's how I think that we're going to do that. So I pulled a card for us before I jumped on. The reason for that was I felt very called to this deck. I don't often use this deck. This is the archetype, uh, the wild unknown. This is Kim Cran's archetyped, uh, archetypes guidebook. This is in my, um, Amazon storefront and we'll link it. Um, and she's a beast dude, both Kim, I think as she wrote this and, but all of these are like heavy. I don't know. Like every time I open it, like, I don't want to say there's like dark energy here. It's not that, but it's like, I feel like a lot of other cards are just like, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. It's going to work. You've got this girl. And I feel like this one's like, oh, really bitch? Like you want to go to the dark side? Like, it's just like, we're going all in. And so I've actually found that like, I, this, this deck is asking so much of us that I don't find myself going to it often. And not because I don't want to challenge myself, but because I don't think we can go that deep that often. That's just not the process and the way of things. So I wasn't quite sure. I knew that this is where I was supposed to go to, but I was like, I don't know. So I was like, well, let me just, I won't be distracted by knowing it's happening live. Let me just sit for a minute. And lo and behold, what is the card that she pulled? So this is the vow card. And I love this so much. A few things um, just in the design of this. It's all yellow energy. There's so much like sacral uh, creativity, like it's oranges and yellows that are on here. There are these hands that are bound together in the center. Then there's this beautiful, I'm guessing like diamond crystal here at the bottom. And then this big 
soaring eagle above, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Interesting, because 2025 is a nine year. Um, not looking for, you know, everything to align and everything, just making the connections. Um, and so this is the vow card, and it says the promise, the oath, the contract. Now, obviously we could take this very literally, which is the vow of like, is, are you like the relationship is coming and maybe it is, maybe that's what we're looking for. Should I get super serious with that person? But overall, this is about not only your commitment, but I loved the idea of a promise. I feel like promises don't come up that often in my life, you know? Um, even like with my kids, I make sure not to do a lot of like, okay, I promise, like you promise, like, and I think that, I don't know, maybe it's just where I am in my life right now, but there is something that seems so trusting, comforting, sincere, and loving, I think, about making a promise. And I think this is really, as I define it, this is really a vow and a contract that we're making with, oh, I can't even believe I'm going to say this, with destiny. Okay. That's what's happening. You're making a vow with destiny that you're saying, um, I commit. I promise that I've seen this, that I understand what I'm doing and I will carry this through because that's the other thing that we keep wanting to stumble into the relationship, stumble into getting out of debt, stumble into success, stumble into our rightful place. And the universe can only do so much, right? Like we're doing a lot with my son who's three, getting him comfortable in school. We've had a lot of struggles and it's so difficult because I can only do so much with nurturing him, loving on him. And then when I send him to school, it's now on him if he feels regulated enough to be able to carry that through in the day, right? And so it's not just him or I. I am his mother. I'm there to guide him. I'm there to, to be there and provide the opportunities, experiences for him to succeed. But ultimately, I can't do it without him and he can't do it for now without me because he's three, okay? <laughs> and that's what I feel like this is of like that the, the universe is like, they're watching, like we are the greatest reality TV show for our guides. Are you kidding me? They're like, motherfucker. Like every episode, they're just like, she was so close. She was so fucking close and she was right there and then she walked away. I mean, we must be absolutely spellbinding to watch. Could you imagine if the choices every time you get so close to the edge? Like I think about that now. I get so frustrated in shows where it's like they get so close to success and then there's an obstacle. And I'm like, that's all we do is, but we're creating the obstacles. Like we already know what to do. And in fact, we already know how to get there. And because it's the thing that we're set here to do, we decided to do, we came here to do, God gave us the ability to do these things, right? And we are the ones that are still blocking ourselves from just doing the damn thing. And so this is really, I think this sacred, like we talked about like the portal and all these other things, but I think that this is really a beautiful opportunity. We also have this new moon coming. Um, and whether you're listening to this in real time or not, I mean, just, I think finding that place where it's like, what is this renewal and how can you commit, recommit? making this promise, making this like 1993, like now and then pinky promise, you know, cross my heart and hope to die, burn book, promise with the universe, you know, of like 10 toes down, accepting that you don't know what you don't know. And it's just a promise that we know what we're supposed to do now and we're going to carry it through. So this says, anytime the energy of the vow is present, we are in the archetypal realm of ceremony and ritual. That means time stands still and anything is possible. That time stands still and anything is possible. What I love about this is I feel like you know, I've been talking about here on the podcast about slowing down 
I shared on Instagram the other day that I went into Trader Joe's and I was like, I'm sorry, is everyone running? Like it felt like everybody was moving so fast and I am really working on where like, I think I hold the most mystery, power, magnetism, and frankly, just keep my own energy by moving slower than I think I should. Because we do have enough time and you know, where I was saying all these people were running around and I still made it to the register at the exact same time as the other people who entered at the same time as me that were running around, you know, chasing uh, garlic, avocados. Like, what do you, where, where's the fire? Where are you going? And so I've really found that to hold radical presence for me has been to slow down. And it's uncomfortable. It's wildly uncomfortable because we don't do that. And it doesn't have to be this grand new, th like, I think sometimes when, when something feels like a radical shift, we think there has to be all these components and it's really not, right? Like a really good New York cheesecake has like how many ingredients, right? Not very many. Like, it's not like a, it's a pumpkin latte, Swiss double mac and cheese. Like it's not just, it can be mwah, perfect, simple, sweet. And that's so much of like slowing down, coming back to self, committing to this promise, making this vow. We don't have to overcomplicate it. We already know what to do. We've already trimmed all of these things away and we can sit and allow time to just stand still. And when we sit in that time, we really do begin to see how time bends and how much we really do have. And it's, that is where it does get really trippy for me because I'm like, whoa, there really is like time within time within time. We are just so guilty of spending our present moment stuck in the past, looking in the past for the answers. Here's what's worked in the past. Trying to use things that don't work anymore to get us to the future because in the future, blank and blank and blank happens. And we're totally missing that the actual key, the component that will get us to that future is here right now. And I think that's what this is. Again, that anything is possible. Sure, there's a million things that could go wrong with these you know, business choices that we're making, these entrepreneurial endeavors. Also, anything is possible. I believe that we're making the steps that were laid out for us to take and they feel really big and they should feel really big. They should feel really big. Um, but this is when we have the opportunity to find out exactly how capable we are. It also says, think of the last promise you made. Was it to another or yourself? And has it been upheld or broken? And that's also where like the idea of a promise is probably conjures up a lot of feelings for a lot of people, mostly of people who didn't keep their promises, Right. But that's what I mean that I think it's something that's so simple and sacred that what would it really be like of all those broken promises that other me people have made or all those broken promises that you made for yourself, like this, you know, learning our capacity for being capable also asks us to develop a level of self-trust that is immovable. I mean, my biggest work right now is how can I feel so safe that I almost feel like the abominable snowman? Like it would take a fucking lot to be able to knock me over. Like we can't get knocked over now by every minor criticism or do to do. We, we are so much stronger than that, that we don't have the time to do that anymore. And so what would it be like to make this vow and promise to yourself? So this says, when the vow is spoken, oof, when the vow is spoken, the air shifts. Karmic ties are formed and destiny tilts on its axis. Our words and intentions have immense power. There is a reason the great mythic stories of our past often include an oath or the mixing of drops of blood as a mark of union. You don't have to incorporate blood in yours. That's okay. Um, Blood. Okay. The tricky part is that reciting the vow, no matter how casually, activates 
the eternal and unseen forces of the world. The ancestors bear witness. The laws of nature respond. These promises cannot be unsaid or forgotten. So breaking them can leave lingering complexities and loose ends. This card calls us to acknowledge the vow we are living by, consciously or unconsciously, and either recommit to it or create a ritual that signifies its closure. Oof, you've been underestimating the power of your promises. I feel so emotional. Oh my God. I'm like, I could start crying. You've been underestimating the power of your promises, which to me, in the regards to the promises we make to ourselves, it's as simple as you've been underestimating your power. Dude, that's fucking heavy, bro. Like if you think about everything with like the like cute little commitments, right? Like I commit every week to coming into the space. I commit like all of our like cute, that's cute. That's cute that you do that, right? Now imagine really making that promise, really making a vow to commit to following through with your destiny. So there's three tiny things here at the bottom I'll read and then we're going to wrap up. This says, win light, bearing witness to the shift towards destiny. So that's really what this vow, this promise is, is it's bearing witness to the shift towards destiny. When dark, it's unconscious vows, unkept promises, and messy karma, right? This is when we start, we kind of start, then we don't start, we stop, start, we start something else. And I can only speak about it so much because, you know, I've only changed my branding 97 times. So, you know, if anybody knows about false starts, it's me. All right. And this is go deeper, learn the yamas. I'm not familiar. Maybe some of you guys are. Yamas, Y-A-M-A-S. This is the five vows of the seeker. Oh my God, you guys, we got to look it up. So this is like major, 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 major. And I think, again, um, if you're just catching this, go back and listen to the last co- – I would honestly go back and listen to like the last four episodes because they really could have been their own um, – it's, it's almost like getting prepared for the pilgrimage is really what the last four episodes have been, like, you know, prepping our, our packs and making sure we have what we need and, like, building that endurance. And now there's nothing left to do but to go on the pilgrimage and and committing to that vow of destiny. And – I think that after truly committing for two months, you're going to be able to see, it's going to do a few things. You will receive enough yeses that you'll go, oh, okay. Well, maybe this isn't going to be as scary and difficult as I thought, right? Like the begin, there is a little bit of beginner's luck here, you know, like remember your ancestors, God, the, your guides, the universe, like Or just even, let's just take it as simple as like energy begets energy. Most of the time, if you were aligned for the thing that you want, you're more likely to get that thing, to accomplish that thing than to not, right? So those are also just the laws of the universe. So I think that we have a little bit of beginner's luck on our side. We have a little bit of this momentum and that, You know, the other great thing is this is a perfect time, I think, for like trying things because typically like here in the States, we have all of these like winter holidays. So people are a little distracted. Everybody's kind of in their own world. So it's a great time, I think, to like start, you know, I wouldn't say dipping your toe in, but like stepping in full force and kind of seeing like, because to us, it's like fee, fi, fo, fum. Like we're going to feel like we're really like making this big declaration and other people will be like, I'm sorry, what did you say? Like everybody, you know, and I think that there's something powerful to that too, because it will let us know that like, even though things feel like major shifts to us, like not that many people are paying attention in the negative sense and what a beautiful relief that is. Um, so I think that there's a lot to really just begin to set this new register for ourselves, beginning to, um, 
have the routine of like, we just reach higher, whatever the thing is that we would normally do now. It's like, you know, reach, 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 reach. And we just grab for the thing that's higher so that we condition ourselves to where that's just, that's just the beginning aim for any of these things. So whether that's in dating, you know, if you asked for this thing and somebody was kind of wishy-washy, great, we reach higher, we're done. We're not going to go, oh, maybe they need a second chance. No, they don't. They're not deaf, dumb, and blind. They're fine. They got it. It was clear communication. Okay. We're moving on. Like whatever those things are. And it's also asking for our clarity. And I think that's the vow and the promise, you know, because again, where the dark version of that is it gets messy. It's unconscious. And there's, again, that reaching higher is, no, 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 no. You know better now, right? Like if my son comes up, he's like, oh, milk, milk. No. How do you ask? How do you use your words? Mom, may I have milk, please? Yes, you may. And so I feel like the universe is asking us that same thing. You know now, you know your language, you know what it is time to do. So you're going to go do it. And that's where I leave you. I am so nervous, excited, and in great and grand anticipation of how things are going to evolve for each and every one of us. I am so excited to do this work myself. Um, a lot of the reason that I do this podcast in seasons, also this is something I share when I coach people, whether they're wanting to start a podcast, I always encourage people to do it in seasons because I think it's important as a creator and it's so much uh, throat chakra output and to make it really good and tight. You need that respite. You need that break. What do we like? What do we not like? How do we want to push this ball forward? So I'm excited to bring you season five. It is going to be even again, that reaching higher. What can we do? More guests, bigger gets. Um, so I'm really, really excited to bring that to you. There's going to be so many ways for us to stay in touch. In the meantime, I have my newsletter. You can join me on Substack. I have, so, I mean, even just my Instagram, my TikTok, my YouTube, there is so much valuable content there. So please be on the lookout for all of that. I'm also teaching our second workshop for our journey of transformation. You know that I'm on this journey of getting fit and famous by 40, which is really, you know, kind of my personal journey uh, that everything else under my umbrella falls into, right? This idea of getting uh, fit so that my body is able to hold all of the energy and everything that I have coming through. And famous is about committing to what it is that I'm here to do and creating those things. And so it's really for me, this journey of transformation, and I am bringing each and every one of you along for that journey as you have your own journeys of transformation, evolution, and things that you are wanting to live life to its fullest. Uh, and that is what we're doing together. So our first workshop was in September. Many of you joined. If you did not, you can still receive that for free. It is on my Substack. The link will be here in the podcast in the show notes. There is a workbook that goes along with it as well. Our second workshop that is building on that workshop. This is major. This is a huge, huge component of everything else that we're going to continue to do over these 19 months. Um, and this is our body, mind, and soul alignment. It is so much more than I can fit into a free workshop, but it is enough that I will be able to give you the bare bones. You can fill in the rest. As always, uh, I will have some promo codes for you if you want to do a lightning clarity session with me and we can just kind of light that shit on fire for you so it, it, it all is cemented in. But I'm really excited for the body, mind, and soul alignment workshop. I think it's so powerful. Um, I think it's always a great reminder uh, information too for those of us that feel like we're really familiar with those concepts. Even myself, when I get to teach it, I feel like I have that opportunity. So that is December 8th. That's a Sunday, Sunday, December 8th. All of that information is in the show notes. And I cannot believe that I'm going to say this, but friends, this is the end of season four and I will see you for season five in January. So as always, tune out, tune in. Love you, mean it. Time, weather, and... Always. Pass.